Please join me in the call to worship. God of the wilderness calls us. Arid lands and frozen tundra, give us ground to stand. We welcome the wilds to stretch our horizons, even as they draw us inward. Unbleached sands and jungled canopies, open us to the breath blowing spirit. Around and within. We seek your gifts, God of the wilderness. Spur us to your hopes in God. Salmon and monarchs carry us to the waters of faith, birth, and the future land. And now for our opening prayer. Wild God, like so much of your work, we arrive on the edge of wilderness with a sense of what it can be for us. We imagine it be many things, our imagination wild. Bring us to this spacious place where we might know how wilderness understands itself. Move us beyond our assumptions and what we do to be barren and desolate. Connect us and remind us that we are part of the wilderness. We are part of all that is wild. Teach us who we really are. Amen. Amen. I invite you to sing. Thank you. 
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Humans take up more and more space every year. We claim what we think is our own and tame what is wild. We do not hear the groaning of creation, but only our own hopes and dreams. Oh God, forgive us. Help us connect to the needs for hope. And now the assurance of pardon. We are God's good creatures. We come from the wild and share in a web of creation that is nurtured by grace. No matter how far ideas might reach, God's love reaches further. God's love supports and holds us in the family of all wild things. Thanks be to God. We are held together by God in community with mercy and grace and forgiveness, redemption and renewal. So no matter how significant the losses, the failures, the messes, we are invited to begin again, to offer and receive forgiveness and to start over. God of all creation, when we slow down, when we focus and attend to the world around us, we are amazed at the vastness of the universe and the minute details of the smallest thing we can see. Holy God, in the midst of atoms and universes, speak to us again that we might hear and follow where you lead. Amen. Our first lesson this morning begins in Exodus 14. beginning with the 19th verse. The angel of the Lord who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them and a pillar of cloud moved in front of them and it took its place. It, the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground and the waters formed a wall for them on their right and on their left, the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites. for The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea 
not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians on the seashore. Amen. And a second reading. From the eighth chapter of Romans, beginning with the 18th verse. Paul is writing. I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very, that very spirit intercedes with sighs <sighs> too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart and knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. These are two very different readings uh, for this Sunday. And uh, I've been having an interesting conversation with one of our church members who um, reads the scriptures ahead of time in the week and then tries to figure out where I'm going to go in my sermon. <laughs> this is one of those weeks. Like, hmm. This is a week when we celebrate the season of creation and specifically we consider a relationship with the wilderness and with God. It is a curious thing though, that uh, the Exodus passage is one we read now. It's you know part of the Passover story, but we're reading it on a weekend when our Jewish cousins are celebrating Rosh Hashanah, which is New Year, a completely different season, a completely different story. And yet in some ways it seems to fit so very well. Um, the, the staff this week, once the, the abatement was set, have been, um, packing and moving things. Um, most of us, our offices will be moving. And so we're trying to decide what should keep and what should donate and what should pitch, uh, what things people in the congregation might like to claim and take home, what needs to be moved, where it can move, who's going to move it. It's been a very physical week. Packing and loading boxes, moving things. And in a sense, it feels like we're moving into the wilderness. I've shared this story before, but I don't know if I've shared it with you. That um, uh, almost four years ago, I was having a conversation with Tom Melton, our facilities manager, about the idea of a renovation and how we could do that. And you know, could they renovate some parts of the church while we worked in others and then 
we move the staff and the renovation shifts, you know, are there, how do we occupy this space? And Tom says, well, my preference is you just all move out. We get the work done and then you move back. And I laughed at him because of course that wasn't going to happen. We can't move out of the church and still do ministry. And then COVID happened. And we moved out of the church. And we have found astonishing ways to do ministry. And even when we moved back, we found new ways to do ministry. And in fact, new ministries. But there was a season in the wilderness in 2020. And there's going to be a season in the wilderness as we make our way through this renovation. And, uh, you know, we have been talking about some aspects of this renovation, honestly, for decades. When I arrived here six years ago and we were talking about the inaccessibility of our building, because we have 28,000 square feet of space that is up or down stairs somewhere, someone mentioned to me that the congregation had been talking about an elevator for 20 years then. And by this time next year, we'll have one. And instead of 12,000 square feet of accessible space, we'll be at 32,000 square feet of accessible space, which can be shared by all of our members and ministries, but also our ministry partners and other groups in town that are also committed to the health and well-being of the community. But between now and then, we're going to wander in the wilderness a bit. People have been asking me for a very long time about dates. When is it going to start? When is it going to end? When are different pieces going to be done? And for a while, I tried to give dates. And then I realized I don't really know. And even when we get dates, they're going to ebb and flow. We're going to be wandering in the wilderness for a while. And this time next year, we should be in renewed space. It's probably a little bit of an, a stretch to call it the promised land, but uh, this space holds promises for so many rich, diverse, phenomenal ministries. Uh, this week, I invited Eve, who leads the Joy of Movement, to come see one of the classrooms upstairs that will be accessible. It has a sprung dance floor in it. She was so excited that her students who have Parkinson's will able to work on the floor as well because it's kinder than the tile in the commons. She was really excited about the future of the Joy of Movement. One of the things that is true about the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness is that one, their timeline shifted. <laughs> Two, they fussed with each other. Three, God was always present and always provided what they needed. I hope that in this season in the wilderness, we can be aware of all those things. There will, days, will be days when we are fussy. But God's promises and God's presence are assured. The fact that this is Wilderness Sunday also invites us to attend to Paul and the way he describes the redemption of a community of faith as related to the redemption of the whole creation fits so very well with who we are as a community and what it means to appreciate even the wilderness. Our uh, earth care team is hosting Coffee Fellowship today. They have been meeting monthly and coming up with all sorts of creative projects and ideas, things that we can do to educate ourselves about how we care for creation, how we live more lightly on the earth, how we understand our lives as intimately interrelated with the wilderness itself, with creation. Those of us who live in cities can often find the wilderness intimidating, foreign, in some cases barren.
When I went to the Middle East in 1994, it's been a minute, I got to travel through several different deserts in Syria, in Israel, in Egypt, in Jordan. And one of the things that fascinated me was that none of them looked like the desert in my head. I think I probably had images like of the Sahara in my head, you know, sand dunes everywhere. And none of them looked like that. And they all looked different. And they all harbored life. It was just different than what I'd expected or what I'd experienced. Moving into wilderness spaces unnerves us. But maybe it's also an opportunity for us to listen to the creation itself, to listen to the way we have not tread lightly on the earth, to consider the way we've contributed to pollution and climate change, the rising population, our impact. If the creation itself is part of God's redemption, then there's promise for us because we are part of that creation. Sometimes we're part of the wildness. Sometimes we exist in the wilderness. We can all live more lightly on the land. We can all live in deeper relationship with God's creation. We can move through wilderness seasons and spaces and notice the life that's there. Life that seems to exist in places that we didn't imagine possible. And in that wonder, feel ourselves move closer to God who creates and redeems us all. There are ways that the world is in pain, akin to labor pains, from fires and floods, rising sea levels, melting glaciers. May we be midwives to what is new and whole and holy. For the wilderness, for creation, for our relationships, our interconnections, the life-sustaining connections we have with the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to sing.
your presence here is a gift. You bless every other person in this room. Thank you. And you bless our congregation and our neighbors by your presence. And you bless one another with your gifts, uh, money, food, care, prayer, song, advocacy, showing up, teaching, learning, growing, tending the earth, caring for creation, all these ways. Installing elevators. Installing elevators is a gift <laughs> because we make the space accessible. Like worshiping in Zoom makes the space accessible. So for all the ways you give, I'm grateful. These are some of the usual ways we give uh, through the mail, bank deposit, online, texting, or in the offering plate here at church. Thank you for the gifts that you are. I invite you to sing this Celtic doxology with me. you to join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. We are called to step out beyond our homes and to see this world, to be adventurers who meditate on the vastness of this universe. God bless us and gift us, sorry, God bless us and the gifts we bring to your vibrant, diverse world of life. We are all on a lifelong journey to the heart of your presence. And now, God, we come together and we pray this prayer that you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our last song comes to us from uh, a group called Dakota Road Music. They write contemporary music for worship, not like for the radio. Uh, so it's meant to be sung in a congregation. Uh, we've sung it before, but it might be new to you. So I invite you to sing along.
journey humbly every day. We are called here into service, a forgiving, loving way. We can more. This is one of Chris Young's photos. The wilderness near at home. We are alive. We are whole. And we are creatures of a vast and vibrant wild earth. Let us go forth to serve, love, and nourish this world of wilderness. Amen. Amen.